No, no, he didn't. But this is what he came to do. So we're going to pick up right where Superbook left off. Okay. If you brought your Bibles today, let's open our Bibles to Luke 23. All right, Luke 23. Now, when Jesus was nailed to the cross, many people just thought that he was like another criminal who what? just deserved, a, he just getting what he deserved, right? But the soldiers took his clothes for himself, for themselves. Now, while Jesus suffered on the cross above them, he prayed aloud, okay? Now, if you are there, we're going to look at Luke 23, 34. Raise your hand if you're there. Luke 23, 34. Thanks, me. Thanks, guys. Okay, I'm going to read it, and you're going to fill in the blank. Here we go. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. All right? That's his prayer. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Now, Jesus' mother Mary and some friends were watching along with Jesus, his disciple John, okay? Now, some of the disciples, guys, they weren't even there, all right? They're like, mm. 23, Luke 23, 34. But here's John, he's there, he's with Jesus' mother. And when Jesus saw them there, he told John to take care of Mary for his, as his own mother. That's so sweet. That's really cool, huh? Wow. And what do you think John did? He did exactly what Jesus asked him to do. From that time on, John took Mary into his home. He took care of her. It was really cool. And the people who didn't believe in Jesus, guess what they did? They mocked him. Do you guys know what mocking is? Yes. Is it a good thing? No. Is it a bad thing? Yes. Should we mock people? No, we should not because that is very unkind. You know what? They said stuff like this. Hey! Hey, you, why don't you just come down on that cross if you're actually the Messiah, the Son of God? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you trust in God, so why doesn't he help you now? Oh, you, <laughs> you save other people? Why can't you save yourself? Mm, good huh? question. Why, why can't you and if you are the king of Israel, come down from that cross. If we see it, we'll believe it. Now, do you think they would actually believe Jesus if they saw that happen? No, probably not, right? So Jesus was dying, and they didn't think that he was the Messiah anymore. Jesus said nothing in return. When all these people were mocking him, he didn't say anything. But we know that Jesus could do anything he wanted, but he chose not to. So as the hours passed, God caused the sun's light to disappear. <gasps> Should we turn off the lights? See what that's like? Okay, the sun is going to start to disappear. Let's see what's going to happen. And we're going to need a little bit of light to see what we're doing over here. So, the hours pass, the sun's light. Oh, it's gone. It's disappearing. <gasps> and finally, darkness fell on everything. <gasps> Whoa. Wow, you guys, let's, let's, let's close our like, It's very, oh, we have the backlight here, but it's very dark. Okay, very dark. Now, in the middle of the afternoon, Jesus called out in a loud voice in Matthew 27, 46. Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Finally, the time came when his terrible suffering, when his terrible suffering was over. Jesus called out in John 19, 30. What did he say, guys? It, it is, is finished. Let's say that together. It is finished. Finished! That's right. And with that, Jesus bowed his head and died. It's so good. Wait, just stop right there. Like, what's finished? What's done? Well, he took the punishment for his sin. And then he also fulfilled every prophecy, prophecy that he came to fulfill. Right? It's like he had all these boxes to check off on his list. And he didn't miss one. He checked every box perfectly. All right? So, and then at that moment, uh oh, what happens? What happens? Something's going to happen to the earth. Oh my gosh. Has anyone it, ever been through an earthquake? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Well, the earth is Wait, going to Is that happening shake. right now? <gasps> is that happening right now? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and rocks, they oh split <laughs> open. <gasps> what? And the curtain in the temple. You guys, this isn't some little like curtain share in your living room. This is a big, thick tap. Probably like curtain. bigger than this screen. That's yes. Yes. And the curtain in the temple was torn 
in half wow. from top to bottom. That's impossible. Tombs opened and people were raised from the dead. Raised from the dead? Are you this serious? Is crazy. What? Oh, can you imagine seeing this? Now, no, no, but yeah, actually, people yeah. did see this. They did witness this. And even those who didn't believe in God, in Jesus. In fact, when the Roman centurion standing at the cross felt the earthquake and saw all that had happened, he said in Matthew 27, 54, truly, this was the Son of God. Wow. Can we get the lights back on? So cool. Yeah. Sorry, let's get the lights back on slowly, slowly. Okay. Smooth. All right. That's and so all cool. the kids went quiet time. Okay, so later on, some of the soldiers were sent to see if the crucified men, because remember, there were some other men that were on crosses next to Jesus, right? So some of the soldiers went up to them to see if they had died or to see if they were still alive. And if they were alive, they were going to break their legs. Has anybody ever broken their leg? Uh, you didn't have that. Oh, wow, yeah. It probably is very painful, right, Steve? Yes. Yes, yes, I think so, right? So they would break their legs so that would help them die more quickly, which is very sad, but yes. that's what they used to do back then. And when they saw that Jesus was already dead, they pierced his side with a spear just to make sure that he was actually dead. And guess what? Blood and water poured out. And Jesus had died. Wow. Can you imagine? So he's there. He's dying. And now what's going to happen? So, I mean, you're there at the cross. There was one person that said, hey, I want to do something here. This is Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph asked Pilate for permission to take his body and bury it. He had a, a tomb, a special tomb that he, he had, and it was perfect just for Jesus. So Joseph and Nicodemus, who remembers Nicodemus? Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night, remember? Yeah. And he asked how he could be born again. So he's there too, right? So Nicodemus, the Pharisee, who visited Jesus at night, took Jesus down from the cross. He wrapped his body in spices and cloth. This is what they would do back then. They wrap bodies, okay? And the body, okay, and then they buried him in Joseph's new tomb, all right? Then a large rock was rolled in front of the entrance. Whoa. And <laughs> the world's saddest, darkest day. All right, guys, so now is a great time to ask this question. You know what? But this time it's a little bit different. It's where is the gospel in this story? Right? All right. So we're changing it up. Okay. So the three most important words Jesus spoke on the cross are it is finished. Let's try it again. It is finished. One more time. Let's let's this time. This time. Let's let our friends at home hear us, okay? It Nice, nice. I'm definitely sure that they heard you. Now, the terrible pain of the crucifixion made it a horrible way to die. I don't think I would ever want to die like that. But the suffering that Jesus experienced was so much worse. While he hung on the cross, God the Father, he turned his, um, his back on him. The Father poured out his anger um, for our sin upon Jesus, his only son. And though, even though Jesus was sinless, he became sin for us. He took that. We didn't have to ask Jesus. He just did that for us. He took the punishment for our sin as our substitute. And when Jesus said, it is finished, he was saying that the punishment was over. The penalty had been paid. And God's anger over the sins of those who believe in his son, Jesus, was all we're all gone. How awesome is so that? Cool. It's kind of like this card was given to all of us, you guys. This yeah, card, that's true. It was with. This is like for all of us, but it's not just a chore, all right? God did all the work for us. There's nothing else we can do. And now we can have cool. eternal life because of that reason. What a gift. All right, let's pray. Okay, let's go to God. Our heads, close our eyes. God, we thank you so very much that you saw it fit to. Send your son to earth to live a perfect, sinless life, 
to die on the cross for our sins, Lord, for my sins, for Miss Megan's sins, and for all the children here and watching at home for their sins. We thank you for that wonderful gift, God. Um, and Lord, I just, I am so excited to um, celebrate um, Jesus' resurrection on Sunday, and I pray that all these children are able to return on Sunday so we can celebrate that together. In your name, we all say, Amen! Amen. So now we have our cohort activities. So your cohort leader is going to come around. And they are going to let you know what your activity you're going to be doing for the rest of the week. Well, I think it's small group. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I apologize. Sorry. My bad. Time first. So cohort small group time first, okay? And then they will tell you what to do. Now, if you are done with your trash, your water bottle, please hand that to your leader. And then we'll all right, guys, and, and our friends at home, we are so glad that you guys joined us, and we'll see you guys on Sunday. Okay, so take a bye, our friends.